um, family. We're gonna start. I'm so happy to uh, get together again. Last week we had family over, and uh, again we are as as we begin our meeting, we're gonna share. You know, um, uh, one reason why we are thankful for the Lord because of what happened now because it's been two weeks. Something specific that happened in the past two weeks that you are thankful uh, to the Lord for. So um, before that, let us let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. Um, the psalmist uh, David wrote that we can give thanks to you every, every time because the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. We come to you in uh, this prayer meeting because... Jesus asked us to pray and to talk to you every day. We ask that your Holy Spirit will guide us and we find, we find more reasons to thank you today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go around of one reason why you're thankful, something specific that happened in the past two weeks that you are thankful for. Uh Okay. Uh, the, the, yes, uh, we're going to go here with uh, Maynard and then uh, Kevin. I, uh, I'm thankful this morning that not all of my tomato plants froze last night. <laughs> Some of the edges got nipped. Wow. I, did not, I did not obey the, the message to cover up everything last night. I, I was notified by my youngest brother, Glenn. He says, mm. you're gonna have a frost. You need to cover up your garden. Wow. And, and so I'm thankful that maybe I still got some tomato plants. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Those, are those the ones that you showed me uh, in front of your porch or, or, or those are in, in the garden in front of the house? Um, no, I think they're beside of the house. Beside of the house, okay. Yeah. Uh, since I have you, uh, any any news about Brother Johnson? For the group, we uh, we anointed uh, Brother Johnson last week. So, uh, any any news on his no, condition? No uh, news. He the other day he was taking a little soup, um, so that is uh, good. But um, he is still there with the family. Um, okay. Later on, I do have a report on Faye. From the pregnancy care center. Okay. And okay. Whatever you want that. Yes. Yes. We'll 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 get into that. Kevin. Yes. Uh, my daughter is uh, dating a guy who is um, kind of a non-practicing, non-denominational Christian, and he's got a Catholic background. But she spent the uh, Thanksgiving holiday and weekend down in Naples with he and his family, and um, Sabbath afternoon. They they have a Catholic background, but they're kind of searching for truth. They're just not satisfied with, you know, what all the Catholic Church teaches. So Sabbath afternoon, I joined them via Zoom, and we talked for a little over an hour about death and hell and different topics. And it was just a real blessing to share with them. And uh, I mean, they brought up texts that I wasn't sure what you know what to. Uh, I hadn't really looked at uh, closely before, but we had a really nice study together. So I was really, really thankful for that and for their interest in Amen. learning more biblical truth. Amen. Thank you. And we'll, come, we'll continue to pray for, for her and those relationships. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Anybody else? One reason why you're thankful about these past two weeks. Yes, Hugo. Hugo. Yeah, last week I was made very happy. I was able to connect with two of my uh, youthful cronies after fifty years. Whoa! And wow. Yeah, yeah, I'm that old. <laughs> so we were able to spend quite some time just. Um, recounting some of our past uh, exploits and activities so, so that was very refreshing and we're looking forward to meeting again uh, via zoom at least in the near future neat amen 
Yes, those those things are refreshing when you see people that you haven't seen in years and connecting. That it's a blessing. So we praise the Lord for that. Anybody else? Anything that happened? Any specific answered prayer uh, received through these past few days? Yes, uh, Betty. I don't know if you can see me. Yes, Marcellus. We're going to go with Betty and then Marcellus. <laughs> yeah, good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. Yeah, okay. yes. yeah, I'm so thankful that, um, uh, I'm so thankful for uh, my, I, I, I would say that, uh, I, I don't call it church, but uh, with uh, some people we meet in, uh, with them on, on, on Sabbath. Um, during the Sabbath, yes. via Zoom, and then we have two uh, getting ready for baptize. So hey, I'm so thankful, and uh, two uh, we have two more. Uh, we are steady with them. Are they local, or where, where are they located? Uh, they are in Haiti. Oh, okay. <laughs> Those are the blessings of of uh, the the internet and, and be able to share the gospel literally throughout the world. So we're, we're very pleased. I, I know the feeling. So, so much joy when you know that somebody's making their decision to follow Jesus. Thank, Amen. thank Amen. you, Marcelo, for sharing. Betty. Uh, I had all of my children home this past week. Oh, right. And I am thankful that they had it all organized. I didn't have to do a thing. The girls came in and did all the cooking and all the cleaning and all the arranging and everything. I couldn't have made that without them. So I'm thankful that they learned something about housekeeping and cooking so that they could help me out. So I could just, I just could do, I just could, they wouldn't let me do anything. And I'm thankful for them. Amen. Amen. I hope when my kids grow up, they'll treat me the same way. Absolutely. They must. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? Something that happened throughout this break? Uh, some reason to be thankful for? Or an answered prayer? Uh, my, my wife should be talking. Uh, <laughs> she, she should be talking about the, uh, the uh, living at the church. <laughs> <laughs> I know, the, the, I know uh, the feeling on the uh, live streaming and uh, we had some uh, some challenges but we also had some breakthroughs and we're getting closer to where I think it's going to be representative of our church so far it has been very poor and it's not been representative what of what the apocalyptic church is about and we don't like that so we're We've, we've been pretty much living over there, uh, working. I think today was the only day we did not go over because we're waiting for some pieces and parts to come. Some of them came and I'll be going over to uh, do some installation of some things that are gonna make a, a difference. Not only with the, the live streaming, but also with the experience of the uh, worshipers as they come. Yes, and, and, and uh... To take on that, I, I want to thank you publicly for what you're doing. It's been a blessing, really, oh, to, to see even just this Saturday. Hello, Maria. Welcome. Uh, just, to, just, to see, um, just to see that we didn't have to use my phone on Saturday, you know. <laughs> it, it was a blessing. It was a blessing, you know, again, we, you know, little by little working on on details, but I think it, it was it was a tr truly a blessing to be able to see, um, you know, uh, that everything can be managed from the the you know the the all the AV system and not uh, from other other place. So so yes, it, it's a blessing. It takes time, but we're we're working. On yeah, but there were audio problems. Maria, yes. we there were problems, and that's what we're working to correct. Okay, and you better, or else. 
<laughs> You're going to cut well, my pay? <laughs> <laughs> well, th thank you, Maria. Thank you. <laughs> gotta, gotta wake up this group here. We, we, have, an, we have another reason uh, to, to pray now. Um, <laughs> so we'll keep that for prayer request at the end of the service that uh, or that or else won't happen. <laughs> but I thank you for your patience, family. You know it takes time. It it take, you know I I wish we 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 knew all details how to work things out. But I, it's been a blessing just to to see how little by little the Lord is is blessing us and you know. Uh, little by little, one one step at a time. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's gonna take some time, but we're happy that little by little is happening. Maria, a reason we are sharing reasons why we are thankful to the Lord um, for the past two weeks. Something that has happened in the past two weeks that you would like to share with us. Or anybody. We've been else. praying for my grandson Joseph to get a job. He graduated and, and he's an engineer, but uh, nothing came up with COVID and everything else. And he, he went to visit friends in Jacksonville and uh, somehow or other, he, there was a company, the, the Goodyear company is there in Jacksonville. They offered him a job and he took it. So right now he's working in Jacksonville. I'm not happy about him being so far away, but you know, the Lord, at least something is there and the Lord provides him. And this week, um, I don't know who's, if it was your your sermon or, or Spring Meadows that said, wait on the Lord and trust him. Mm. Trust him. Because it happened to be that Jacksonville offered him the job. And the next day, a company here in Apopka called him with an wow. interest. But... They said, well, we, we, they asked some questions and they said, well, we'd like to set up an interview. We'll call you. They didn't mm -hmm. call. I was, mm -hmm. and so I had thought, wow, that's the answer because I'm always looking for a sign. And then it didn't work out. So I, you know, my, my daughter says, mommy, you can't always be dreaming sign and sign. You have to trust in the Lord. And even, and of course, things don't seem to be going the way I think they should go. And you know that I am, uh, I don't know if you know, but I am kind of opinionated. And when things don't go my way, I, I question why this, is, this isn't right. And I'm learning, I'll, I'll probably die before I really learn my lesson. <laughs> but um, I'm learning to trust the Lord. I'm trying to trust him. And I did happen to see my, my the, the doctor yesterday. Karen, you know, I was very worried Hmm. about I'm um, having the surgery on my knee on uh, December 16th and I really have been having terrible thoughts about it because Catherine is suffering I uh, Betty you look wonderful you are you out of pain not entirely but it's coming well you see I'm worried about my weight that I was too heavy and that my thighs would be too big and and they wouldn't let me see the doctor and then I called last week and uh, I told that somehow or other they gave me the, the, the business manager and she said, okay, I'll put you in because they changed the doctor's schedule where he doesn't see patients, he just operates mm. and you only get to see the PAs, but he does have a very good team, but I wanted to see the doctor that was going to cut into me, you know, and, and, and uh, I, yeah. I got on with this girl and she was very, very nice. And she said, I started to give her my story, ready to give her a big long discourse and cry and everything else. And before I could do all that, she said, okay, I'll make you an appointment. So I went, I met the doctor. He's a lovely man. They measured my leg and they said, well, the, the, the limit is 32 inches and I'm 23. Whoa, that's great. Amen. Praise they said, it's it's uh, I keep dreaming is, is it going to hurt is it going to hurt is it going to heal because you know the the weight of your body has to be held up by this little this little joint that they put in you and uh, but I'm trusting I'm trusting the Lord that it's going to be okay and Amen. I thank him I thank him whatever it is that's it thank you Maria thank you so much for sharing 
Well, family, we're gonna get into, into our um, study. And uh, today um, we are continuing a series that is called uh, Belief, Belief. And uh, today it's a specific passage. We are very, very familiar with the passage. I wanna thank uh, Karen for the uh, opportunity to uh, tell the story. She's gonna tell us the story in, in her own words. And then uh, we're gonna retell the story. So let us pay attention. And after that, we're gonna, we're gonna retell the story together. Go ahead, Karen. All right. Please turn, if you will, to John 3, and it's 1 through 16, and I'll tell you the story. As we well know the story, it's a leader, Nicodemus, who's decided he wants to come and talk with Jesus. And what's so interesting is when he comes and tries to talk with Jesus, he just really makes only a couple statements. And I was really struck by how Jesus doesn't go into a long discourse and back and forth. He really, he listened to his initial questions and then Jesus goes straight to the heart. He doesn't beat around the bush. And he really told him, he said, you know, you're really not needing theoretical knowledge or intellectual knowledge, Nicodemus. What you need is spiritual heart work. And he says, in order to really appreciate heavenly things, that the only way that's going to happen is if you really ask the Holy Spirit to give you a new heart. Because without that, he says, without that, we can't see the heavenly things and appreciate them if we don't have the heart to appreciate them. And of course, as we well know, Nicodemus is like, but how can this be? How can I have like a brand new heart? And then I found it so interesting how Jesus is like, how come you as a leader are not knowing how to have the right heart to appreciate spiritual things? And then when you look in the verses 10 through 14, Jesus is really talking about how he needs to be the focus that all we really have to do to believe is that we've got to look to him, that he's going to be lifted up. And when we do, he is going to give us eternal life. But I also love how he talks about how the Holy Spirit will change our hearts and we won't even understand how. I always love that text where it's like, you know, you can't tell where the wind comes from and you can't understand. And yet he's saying, but if you'll ask, I will give you a new heart to where you can really appreciate spiritual things. And when we have that heart, then he says, we'll be able to believe, we'll be able to look to him, we'll look to him and live and we'll have eternal life. And then he closes with that beautiful verse that we all know, John three sixteen. Mm. how he reminds us that God so loved us that if we will choose to believe, if we'll look to him and looking to him and we'll believe because we've asked for that heart and he's going to give it to us and it will help us appreciate spiritual things that we just won't appreciate if we don't have the heart change. And I just love that story. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's go around. How does the story begin? It's in John 3. What did you hear Karen say? Don't get in the Bibles yet. We're going to get in the Bibles in a second. But just what she said. What did you hear Karen sharing? Anybody? Who's the story about? Um, she said that Nicodemus went to um, pay a visit to G with Jesus. Okay. And uh, what time of the day was that when, when they met, when Nicodemus met with Jesus? Night. 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 It was at night time. And then uh, Nicodemus came. Uh, who, who started the conversation? Who was the first to speak? Do you remember? It was Nicodemus. It was Nicodemus, right? How did, how did he say hi to Jesus? What was his uh, salute to Jesus? Well, he said, we know that you're from God because of the things that you've been doing. Yes. Very good. Now, how, how was Jesus' response? Did Jesus, uh, how did Jesus say hi to Nicodemus? 
He doesn't answer the question. <laughs> he responds and gets right to the heart of the matter. Okay. Which takes me to the point. And this is an open question. Again, those who haven't spoken, this is an, an opportunity. Have you, uh, how do you deal with confrontation? Are you good at confronting people? Would uh, anybody uh, would feel uh, comfortable sharing uh, a time in which you had to deal with confrontation? Yes, Maynard. I found that one of the best ways is to listen to what they're saying and repeat what I think they're saying to back to them so that we understand each other and what the other person is really trying to say to me. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Maynard. Yes, so you try to listen, you try to listen Try to listen and, and, and active repeat, listening, repeating repeat what you hear. back to them what they have said to me. Okay. I'm certain that I have understood them. Okay. Anybody else? How do you deal with confrontation? Jack, you don't seem to be somebody that is, uh, confronts people a lot, do you? Well, after all my years of administration, I've had confrontations with uh, students, with parents, and with... Uh, of all things, teachers. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> I think one of, one of the things that you, you, you have to do, uh, you should not have a real confrontation unless you know the person. If you know the person, then you know ahead of time what, what probably their uh, view is going to be. If you don't know them at all, then you may be caught off guard. You may not be ready to answer. You may just be sitting there and they think there's something wrong with you. But if you know the person, if you know the student, if you know the teacher, if you know the parent, uh, you can usually have a good idea of where they're coming from so that you can listen to them. Uh, sometimes you can agree with them and sometimes you don't agree with them. I had a parent come in who had not really thought through a situation and uh, wanted me to do something that literally, because the records that the teachers make are legal, those are legal documents, wanted me to allow uh, some students that she was picking up to not be counted late if they were in her car in time uh, for when school would start, but she was not there at the school. And, and I had, I listened to her very much. And I said, I'm sorry, but this is not a situation where I can make that decision. The state has already said, the conference has already said. Uh, it, it took quite a little while, but in the end, she never had a late child again. Hmm. And so I, I felt it was successful. <clears throat> but, uh, wow. Jesus knew Nicodemus's heart. He knew where Nicodemus was coming from. And I think that's why he was able, he, he bypassed everything and went, like Karen said, right to the heart of the problem. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Jack, for sharing. Anybody else? being in a, in a situation with, when you had to confront somebody. I'll, I'll, I'll share one and it was, it, it was good and bad. So you know that your pastor is not patient and smiley all the time. Sometimes I lose it. Um, we were on a mission trip in Dominican Republic uh, last year. And um, we were uh, already on this, after the, everybody left, uh, came back home I, I stayed with my family for a few days and we were in a resort and um, we were having dinner and all of a sudden uh, my my older son Eduardo who is a little picky with food uh, he goes dad I don't I'm not gonna eat this rice and I'm like why are you aren't you gonna eat the rice my philosophy is 
if you're in a buffet, well, I don't know if we will ever go back to a buffet nowadays, but <laughs> when we used to go to buffets, you know, I, I just miss so much uh, sweet tomatoes. It's, 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 <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> but um, uh, when, when, when he says, dad, there is, an, there is an animal on my rice. I'm not going to eat it. And I was like, come on, Eduardo, you already got this. It's probably a rice that is burned. You know, you, you have to eat it. And then he's like, dad, look at it. And when I looked at it, it was a big old black uh, fly. Ooh. And then I was, yes, exactly. Like <laughs> I wanted to, it was bad. So, you know, I, I, I went, I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. I decided to go to the, um, I decided to go to the office, the main office uh, at the front desk to make him aware of the situation. And I told him, listen, I just found these, you know, I didn't want to make a, a big noise, but I go and the person in charge uh, said, okay, nobody knew what to do. So they kept on calling the, you know, the, the chef called, uh, no, the, the, the person that the waiter called on uh, the manager and the manager on the supervisor and the manager, the manager, at the end of the day, they bring me to the general manager of the whole the acting general manager of the, the resort. And it was a guy from Spain. So I'm trying to explain to him what was going on. And he completely ignored me. He didn't say a word. And he said, uh, well, sir, let me see what we can do. And he left and he didn't come back. I was there for like almost half an hour and I lost it. I lost it. And you know what the problem is when something happens that, that has happened to me that all of that time I had time to think what I was going to say if he dared to come back and he did come the poor guy came back and I just went off and I'm like I can't believe it I didn't want to make a fuss out of it but you kept me here forever this is irresponsible blah well I went at the poor guy and the guy just looked at me and I'm like, and we're never coming back to this hotel. And this is incredible. Well, I left. The sad part is that my son, my son was with me there the whole time. And, uh, you know, needless to say, he was, he was embarrassed. And he told me, dad, dad, don't, don't, and I'm going to put this in Facebook and I'm going to let the whole world know. And you know what my 13 year old boy told me at the time? I, I was so embarrassed. He said, Dad, so we're talking about I go to confront somebody and now my own kid is confronting me because of my reaction. And he said, Dad, ha have you thought about all of these employees that work here? All of these people that don't make the money that we make in the US? Dad, if you public this, if you go, go and publish this to the social media and you give a bad review, what if they close down this place? What are these people gonna live of? These people are gonna be out of job and they have families. I thought that he was the dad and I was the kid. I was so embarrassed. Yet I, I, I have never felt so proud of my son. And it made me think, you know, the way that I had acted. And there is, we cannot control what other people make us feel and, and, and what they say and what they do to us. But we can control what we say back to them and what our reaction will be. Because probably that will be the, the, the only Jesus that they will know. So, uh, you know, the following morning, you know, obviously that night I couldn't sleep. I was so embarrassed and, you know, I had my conversations with God. So the following morning, I, I, I talked to my son and I'm like, son, what, what do you think that I should do? I knew what I had to do, but I just wanted to engage him to know that his father, something that I do every night with my, my, my boys before we go to bed, I, I have the prayer on them. I lay hands on both of my sons and, and we prayed. And no matter what has happened during the day, they know that at nighttime, you know, everything is erased and we don't go to bed, you know, upset at each other. So 
I told them, I told, I told my, my, my son, you know what, I, uh, what do you think we should do? And he's like, do you think that we should talk, I should talk back to the guy? And he hesitated a little bit like, but how are you going to talk to him? No, do you think that I should apologize to him? And, and he said, yeah, that I think that you should talk to him. So we went back and I took him with me because, you know, and this is something that I've learned as a father. If I make a mistake in, in public, my kids need to know, you know, uh, uh, that dad is human and, and dad also loses his patience. So we went back and, and the guy came out. I called up on him. He came out. He didn't want to come out, <laughs> but he came out and we started talking and something that happened, uh, um, uh, Maynard, as, as I was listening to him, I said, sir, listen, I, I'm not here to, please don't worry. I'm not here to scream at you or anything. I'm here to apologize in front of your staff. Uh, so, you know, he let his guard down and, and I told him, I'm sorry, you know, just this is how I felt. And, and he said, sir, I am so sorry. Uh, he started apologizing to me. He's like, sir, I am new in this position. I am a new manager. And honestly, I just, this had never happened to us and I didn't know what to do. So when I went in the office, I was trying to call managers and supervisors to see, you know, what can we do in this situation? Because this had never happened. And, you know, obviously for our customers are the most important thing. So bottom line, you know, we ended up having a very good conversation. We ended up talking and we realized that there were a lot of things that we liked, including sports and sport teams and all of that. And, and it was a very, very good process. And, and, and my son, they even gave my son a present and something and for the family. But the, the whole point is that, you know, I, uh, it was both. Uh, uh, you, we can have unhealthy confrontations and we can have very healing confrontations. And, and I believe that's, that's what the, the, the story is about. So right now we're going in the, in the time that we have left. It's about, uh, we, it's over, we have more than 16 people. I'm going to share my screen. And uh, what I want us to do, to do is to read over the passage. Um, let me see, this is not, okay, hold. Let me, uh, I'm going to share my screen with you in a second. And uh, what we are going to do, we are going to talk about uh, the story. We're going to read the story. So if, if you would like whoever wants to start reading, we're going to read from John 3. And we're going to read um, 1 through 16. So everybody can read one verse. Whoever wants to start as we did it last time, you can go ahead and start reading. John 3, 1 through 16. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus answered, I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? A sec how can he go a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Hmm. Jesus, Jesus answered, answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Verse six, uh, verse seven, I'm, I'm sorry. Verse seven, anybody? Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. The wind, blows. Well, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do not understand these things. Verse 
Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. You do not believe me when I tell you about the things of this world. How will you ever believe me when I tell you about the things of heaven? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the son of man must be lifted up. Hmm. So that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Hmm. For God so loved the world so much that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's the, that's the story for today. It's uh, John 3.16. I mean, we know the passage. Now we're going to ask uh, some questions. And remember, um, one of our guidelines is whenever we share, remember to share what I feel that is happening in my life. No, we're, going, we're not going to use the church or, or you or they or we. I always speak on first person. So the first question that I want to ask you tonight, let me just stop sharing the screen so I can see you all. The first question that I want to ask tonight is, why do you think Nicodemus came to Jesus at night? Why do you think Nicodemus came to Jesus at night? Yes, Jack. Well, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm blown away by the fact that Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Hmm. That's what it says. The first thing it says, a Pharisee. And that got my attention because hmm. a Pharisee. And then when it says came to him by night, ah, yes, he was a Pharisee. He was showing his true colors by coming at night. And, and that to me, shows me that he wanted to believe in Jesus, but he wasn't ready to make a commitment. Mm. Am I ready to make a commitment? And so that's a challenge to me. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jack, for sharing. Anybody else? Why do you think he came at night? I sometimes am embarrassed or shy and... Uh, I might want some privacy. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I, I, uh, I don't know if uh, you heard uh, Pastor Joel's sermon on, on Saturday when he was sharing that he met these homeless uh, people in the morning and then at night and that he didn't want to look at them. So, you know, that's kind of like how I feel, you know, he was there, but he didn't want to talk or he didn't want to be seen, um, which moved me to the, ne the next question. Have you ever been embarrassed about Jesus in your life? If you feel comfortable sharing, was there a time in your life growing up or, or in an office environment or, or in, a, in a secular environment with people that were non-believers that you were embarrassed of, of, of being or letting people know that you, you are a Christian or you were a Christian at the time? Or with friends making a decision that you just went with the group because you didn't want to be embarrassed? Kevin, you're, you're muted. There you go. I have had situations where beforehand I thought that I would say something or um, say something spiritual or about Jesus in a certain situation 
when I got to that situation, I didn't have the courage to do it. Mm. And so I didn't say anything. And okay. I, I felt bad about that, but. Um, our, our next question, what do you think about Jesus' reaction? Um, agreeing to meet with him at night. What do you think Jesus was thinking about Nicodemus? Or also, what do you think about the way that Nicodemus said hi to Jesus and the way that Jesus responded to Nicodemus? How does it sound to you? Maynard. Well, well, Jesus knew that Nicodemus was on the fence. You know, Nicodemus probably had peer pressure. That's why he snuck away. Uh, he didn't want to let the other Pharisees know that he was coming to this uh, rebel rouser. And Jesus saw it right away. And yet, instead of uh, chastising him, calling him out and saying, I know who you are, you're, you're jelly belly and whatever, he just, he just said, you need, you need to have a new heart. Yeah, I need to be born again mm -hmm. and, and in order to understand heavenly things. So, so Jesus cut right to the chase and just said, you better stand up for what you think is right and then follow it. Mm. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Maynard. I was going to say something similar to Maria, that uh, Jesus went directly to the point. No hesitation. You know, no circling around, mm -hmm. you know, the question. He went directly to his heart. Straight to the heart. Yes. I, lo I love that title for, for today's. That, um, you see, you guys are giving me so many ideas for sermons. So that when you hear, I'll say credit to my prayer group. <laughs> this was a sermon prepared by the prayer group. A change of heart. What do you think about? Could that summarize the whole interview, the whole encounter? A change of heart. Now, did the change happen right away that night? Yes, Maynard. But I, I think Nicodemus was having a change of heart to even dare to go. Yeah. yeah. He, he went because he was the Holy Spirit was working upon his heart and he was he was struggling and he went because there was a change taking place but it had not fully developed okay um, then the next question is um, Nicodemus was struggling to understand the the born again concept how do you understand and, and when did you understand what it means to be born again in your life? Can, can somebody share? When was that you said, oh, wow. Or can you identify one moment that you say, I think this is when I was born again. And doesn't necessarily mean being baptized. It could have been like a, a, an all moment in your life, an experience where you had this incredible encounter with Jesus like Nicodemus did. I don't think that's just a one-time thing. Uh, with me, quite often something will happen and I, it'll just strike me that that was God. Mm. Okay, thank you, Ellie. Thank you. Yes, Kevin. I think I'm still trying to comprehend it mm -hmm. as I go through life's experiences and daily living, still trying to grasp it. Thank you, yes. Anybody else? Yes, Jack. Those who were there when I shared my uh, conversion when Pastor James was having us go through that process may remember this, but the, the, the time in my life, you know, I was, I was baptized, but I wasn't converted. Mm. I was converted at a week of prayer at... Uh, at that point, it was called Southern Missionary College. I still feel that that's the right name because that's what I graduated from there as. Uh, I was a, a missionary. Anyway, uh, at, that, at that point, I came face to face with the fact that I did not really have a personal relationship with, with Christ. I was going along uh, like so many 
I was, I was doing the right things. I was saying the right things. I was going to the right places, but my head and my heart were in all kinds of different places. And that, that struck me right there. And I think the Lord was waiting for that moment because within a, a few months of that time, uh, after I made my recommitment, um, I, I developed a relationship with somebody that I have been with for the last 55 years. Wow, and I wonder who that is. I, I made a decision to go after a particular uh, job. I was working at that, things didn't work out. And he showed me the way all the way through. Hmm. And uh, my wife and I were sitting on our little couch in our little trailer I had always said, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm taking too much time and she's gonna be right. It's to okay, do. it's okay. But uh, <laughs> I'd always said, I'm never going to do the things that my dad did. My dad and I did not get along when I was younger because of circumstances I won't get into. But I said, I would never teach. He was a preacher, but he started out as a teacher. I said, I'd never preach. And I said, I'd never do anything where I had to get up front and be because I, I, was, I was a shy, very shy person. And at that point, we were at such a low point, we looked at each other and we were talking about and we were praying about, what can I do? What can I do with my life? I'm, I'm at a point where I, I, I don't see, it's nothing but brick walls in front of me. And so I went down through the classes. I had 120 hours of college credit and no major. That's how bad I was. I loved to go to school, but I hadn't figured it out. So sitting there, we had prayed and we looked at each other and we almost said it at the exact same moment. And it had to be the impression of God. I could teach. I had all these classes. What could I do? I could teach. So I called my dad who was a superintendent. I know he had to be sitting down or I'd have heard him hit the floor because he knew that I'd never wanted to do that. And for me to call him and say, I need a job. Do you have a teaching position somewhere in your union that I might go to? So that to me was the moment. And then God said, okay, I can use you now, but you're going to have to take my direction. And mm -hmm. he directed me and the rest of my life, I've tried to ask him, what should I do? I'm faced with a situation. And uh, of course, my wife has a lot to do with the direction my life has taken also. Thank God for the wives. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> um, we know that this is one of the passages in the Bible where the, the entire gospel story is shared. Uh, do you understand exactly what the gospel is? Or what do you understand what the gospel is? And if you had to explain it to someone that is a non-believer, what would you tell them what the gospel is? If they could only hear what the gospel is from your lips, what would you tell them? How would you tell the, the gospel story? Well, it's exactly from John 3.16. Jesus was, is God. He came to earth to pay for our sins and, he, and he's coming back to take us home. That to me is the gospel. That's the good news. Jesus is coming back to take us home, to be with him, to restore this world to the, the perfection that he made in the beginning. Okay. And how would you talk about uh, how the gospel has impacted if, if I'm a not believer and I'm asking you, okay, and I ask you, okay, Maria, so how, how does the gospel uh, make a difference in your own personal life? Why should I believe in what you believe? How, how is it real in your own life? Well, you know, you, you live with, with disappointments and sickness and, and uh, all kinds of things that set you back. And what set, keeps you going is the fact that 
it's the the sorrow is going to end. We have we have sorrow all around us, and we we lose loved ones. We have people around us who are sick and hurting, and the only way to keep going is to have that hope that Jesus paid the price for all the bad that the world has done, and He's coming back to make it better. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? How would you share the gospel in your own words with a non-believer? I don't know about you, but it challenges me as a pastor that um, when I look around and I realize that most of my friends are from church and I say, wow, I need to have more friends that are not from church because I need to be challenged. A lot of times I believe that I, I don't want to talk to people that don't believe because they're going to challenge me. And, and what I need to understand is that they're not challenging me. They are challenging God. I, I'm only going to be used. So what has worked in my personal life, it's just sharing my story. You know, when, when I had the accident, and that's one of the things that I am so thankful to the Lord for, is that I um, this uh, break, this Thanksgiving break, I, I was able to meet with my brother and my sister-in-law. And I hadn't seen them since the day of my accident. They were here in town in, well, they were in town in Miami. And uh, we were supposed to have uh, dinner together. And we couldn't because I was at the hospital. I ruined uh, lunch and dinner for all of my family that day. So in a way, we were able to connect and have it this time. We were like, okay, guys, this is the dinner that I owed you. And, and, and Betty, as you were sharing, I'm so thankful that my mother and my brother cooked the whole meal. You know, I just went to enjoy it. Um, I brought the, I brought the, the, I brought the, uh, the pies. So that was my contribution. But mm -hmm. it, it, it's a blessing. When, when I went to the doctor and, and to the nurses and they saw my whole rehab, and I just showed them pictures. The way that I share my gospel story is I just show them the picture of the car and I tell them I was supposed to be dead, but I am alive. And I think that's what the gospel is. We, are, we were all supposed to be dead, but now I am alive and, and I have life in Jesus. And that keeps me going. That is my motivation to keep on going because life, we can never take life for granted. Life is so short. We're here today. We don't know where we will we'll be tomorrow. It brings me to the closing point, Maynard. I know that you've been waiting. When is that pastor is going to let me share? Maynard, this is the time. What, tell us what happened. You were sharing with us, and I think Maria had shared some information with you. Yeah, Maria called me a couple nights ago regarding Faye Hull, H-U-L-L. -L. She was the director for the pregnancy, Apocalypse Pregnancy Care Center. Uh, she passed away very shortly, just a few days after she shared with us here on a Wednesday night prayer meeting. Oh, wow. Uh, she passed away on October 7th. And thank you, Maria, for bringing that to my attention. Um, she had several occasions of falling, um, and she uh, had fell. Uh, on this one time and broke her hip. So she was in the hospital, she went through surgery. Uh, at the hospital, she recovered rehab wise out of surgery. She was getting ready to go home to be discharged the next day. And she had a massive heart attack and died. Wow. And so uh, Faye, uh, who was on our call line for prayer meeting uh, is now gone. So, you know, as you say, we never know. Mm -hmm. We never know from one day to another yes. uh, what, what the, that day is gonna hold. And so um, we, we need to reach out, you know, to, the, uh, to their organization with, I think, some type of a sympathy I'm sorry that, you know, time has gone by. October 7 is when she passed away. Wow. But um, at least uh, thank you, Maria, for alerting us 
you know, to to whatever. Well, I've been back. I've had visited the place three times already. They have just uh, let you know that her legacy continues. The women who work there are very dedicated. They have a lovely building, and they keep it neat and clean. And they, and uh, they were very grateful for everything that I brought them. In fact, I was very lucky. I went to the uh, the good neighbor on Monday morning. They um, they get up, they go there, and they clean up, get ready for Wednesday. And they gave me quite a few things at really cheap price, like pennies. They gave because they knew I was going to just turn around and bring it all over to them. I was able to bring them a high chair and a walker and a stroller and a car seat and little blankets and even mending heart ladies who made the baby sweater sweater sets. We we gave them 12 sweater sets too. So they the that that place they know a Papa Church and they and they are very grateful to us and they thank us for caring about them. Amen. Thank you. So at least you know, you know, you know that you, what you did meant something, and that people are carrying on your work. Yes. Uh, and, if any of you wish to send a card or anything to the center, uh, their address is Post Office Box one zero six four, one zero six four, okay. and the zip code three two seven zero four. 32704 is a zip code, the Pregnancy Care Center. Okay, maybe we, we can go one day, uh, Maria, and, and we'll get a discount, an extra discount from Ingrid at the Good Neighbor Place. And, uh, and uh, we can go over there and, and just pray with them and uh, let them know that she, she blessed us, you know, in our prayer meetings and we continue to pray for them. That's the beauty of the gospel. And I, I want to invite you, see what, what we do here as a group, a live group, it's uh, living intentionally for eternity means that what we learn, what we share with each other, we have to share with somebody else. So my invitation for you is not a challenge, it's an invitation, is to pray th that this week, this coming week, God will give us an opportunity to share at least with one person with one person, who it will be, God has that person already prepared for you. So let's pray, say, God, you already know the person that you want me to uh, be a blessing to, give me an opportunity to be a blessing to one person this week. And hopefully next week, we get to come and talk about it. Um, I wanna thank you uh, for your time. Again, our series continues next week, Believe. Uh, I'm, I'll probably ask one, one of you, if there is a volunteer, if not, I can call later on, that would like to tell the story. You saw how Karen did it. Thank you so much, Karen. It's simple. It's just a few verses that I give you. And all you have to do is tell the story if you, in your own words. So is there anybody that would like to tell the story? I will tell you what the Bible text is uh, uh, when, once we finish. All you got to do is tell the story. Anybody would like to do it? If not, I'll, I'll, I can call somebody else later on. And uh, so remember, we are doing the, the, the Gospel of John. This is stories on the uh, Gospel of John, encounters that people had with Jesus. We will continue next Wednesday. Uh, as uh, we close today, I want you to keep in mind uh, praying for our service Sabbath, we really want to do something different, especially for those who haven't felt comfortable coming to church. We want to do an outdoor service. But uh, as of today, it said that there were there, there was 60, 50 to 60 percent of probability of rain on Sabbath. So please, let's keep on praying if if uh, God will allow us to to do these outdoors and, and make it a, a family experience for, for this Sabbath. We are already pe have people that are prepared uh, for worship, people that are prepared for service and, and to connect with each other on Saturday. Let us pray. Father, we thank excuse you. Me, yes. Excuse me one second. One second. Yeah, Maria. I just wanted to tell you something just before you close. I yes. saw Pastor Johnson yes. yesterday we went to the book and Bible and he was there 
shopping and I see uh, from the distance, he was talking to my husband because I was in the car and I'm wondering, this young fella is talking to Fred and then they came walking toward the car and it was James. And he looked very well. I mean, he wasn't running and skipping, but he was walking nicely, nice up and straight. And he uh, he said, thank the Lord, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. I'm sleeping and I'm, I'm feeling better. But he showed us the x-ray. Have any of you seen his x-ray of his clavicle? It oh looks my. like a roller coaster. It is. It looks like a, a, a board, like a, a ruler, a big ruler in his chest with nails sticking it. Unbelievable what, he, what he's got inside of him. And pins, pins all over, and where his his ribs were, one rib was was so was like this, and it's just growing together. They couldn't set it; they, they just had to let it fill up the, the the bone. But what a miracle! He was really broken up a lot, but the Lord has allowed him to heal so beautifully. It could have been such a terrible tragedy, but I thank, but thank God that He's on His feet. There is, uh, in order for, for us to have a testimony, we first have to go through the test. So we, we are grateful for our pastor. And uh, I won't let him go in. I told him, when you want to get in your bike, it will be on a trainer at home. You will sit comfortable on your living room. <laughs> no going on the road right now. Well, family, it, it's always a blessing to connect with you, to pray with each other and for each other. Let's continue to pray. Pa Pastor James, uh, God, God willing, will be with us in two weeks. So two Wednesdays for, from now, he will be here with us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we lift up our hearts to you because you can cure all of our infirmities and heal us from all of our disease, Lord. We thank you because you accept everyone as they are in the stage of faith that they are. Even Nicodemus, Lord, having that interview with, with you, it took him three and a half years. You had to die on the cross for him to really accept you publicly. Uh, we all accept you in different ways. We all need to be born every day again, Lord. Every day is a new battle. Every day is a battle with ourselves, with pride, with uh, doubts. But we come to you in the name of Jesus, in the name of this pandemic, in isolation, we ask that you may be our consolation, mm -hmm. our restorer, our healer, mm -hmm. our early help in times of trouble. As we uh, go to rest tonight, we ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to hover in our hearts, helping us to grow in grace in Christ every day. We pray and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a blessed night, family. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.